Hi, I'm Manny Dela Cruz. I'm going to be replacing the ball joints on a 1998 Dodge Ram uh, 4x4. It's a solid axle, a Dana 44 axle. I'm going to uh, jack the uh, truck up and, and get started. All right, so uh, we got the wheel off. Point it there. We got the wheel off, and uh, what I've done is uh, jack the car up. And the first thing I'm going to focus on is removing the brake caliper. There's actually two bolts behind the brake caliper. I'm going to undo those and then see that piece of rope back there. I'm going to hang the caliper by the rope so that I don't stress the, uh, the, um, the brake line. Um, and then after that's complete, I've, uh, I've, I've just squirted uh, uh, some kind of uh, penetrant on this uh, uh, giant nut. I've got a, a breaker bar and a cheater bar and all sorts of fun stuff. I'm going to pull that nut off. Um, oh, but before that, I'm going to pull the like caliper, and then I'm going to pull the uh, brake disc. Okay, as you can see, I've removed the, the caliper. It's hanging by a rope, um, and I've also removed the brake disc, and that sort of exposes the hub and the axle nut. Now, this axle nut is a 42-point-something uh, millimeter or 1 and 11 sixteenths axle nut, I'm going to use a 45 millimeter axle nut, which, which I'm sorry, 45 millimeter uh, socket, which will work just fine. But I got to pull that pin, and uh, um, after I get it all wedged up, before I start turning that nut, I'll I'll, I'll show you how I keep that uh, hub from turning when I when I when I spin that nut. Okay, so the next thing I got to do uh, before I remove that giant axle nut is to remove this uh, castle nut and then disconnect this tie rod end. Um, in order to get the proper leverage on this uh, on this castle nut, I need to be able to move that steering knuckle around. Um, this castle nut here, I need to move the steering. I need to be able to move this uh, steering steering knuckle around. This is that whole thing. And then once the steering knuckle is able to be moved around, then I should be able to adjust that breaker bar and that giant um, uh, cheater bar with that giant uh, 45 millimeter. Uh, 45 millimeter socket, but first I'm gonna I'm gonna bust loose this castle nut and bust loose this tie rod end. All right, so what I've done is uh, instead of using a pickle fork, which I think is one of the stupidest tools ever invented, I've got this. Uh, 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 I guess it's another type of ball joint press, or maybe it's a a bearing puller. But I'm gonna use that to bust loose the end of that tie rod. All I have to do is tighten that nut, and then tap uh, it with a brass hammer, and it should come loose. Okay, so as you see, as you can see, the uh, end of the tie rod has been disconnected. Uh, Remove that castle nut, it's disconnected from the steering knuckle, and everything sort of popped loose. Nice and easy, give it a little tap, off it went. All right, so hopefully, as you can see, I've got my 45, 45 millimeter socket over the end of the nut. I've removed the uh, cotter pin, and then I've got a, a ratchet. This is a not a half inch, but three quarter inch. Uh, breaker bar and then there's a cheater bar over it and uh, to keep the hub from spinning I've got a Moses rod called the Moses rod really it's just a big old giant pry bar it's about six feet long it runs all the way to the ground but it's actually wedged up between these two two uh, lug nuts and and that seems to be enough purchase uh, I've done this before it worked it worked okay so I'm about to try it again see if we can bust that rusty nut loose using my cheater bar okay all right, um, that worked great. I didn't have any problems uh, busting that nut loose. Uh, that sounds funny. Uh, I've got the uh, uh, 45 millimeter socket, and I'm turning on that nut. And there it is. Perfect. All right. Okay. So the next step is to remove these these bolts right here. There's one up top. And there's two on the bottom right here, and then on the other side of the steering knuckle. Oh, you can't see it's dark, but on this side. And one side, those are the uh, steering hub uh, to bearing hub, uh, steering knuckle to bearing hub nuts, or bolts. Anyways, <laughs> i got to remove those. So I'm going to do that next. And it's made a lot easier by disconnecting it from that from that tie rod bar because then I can move that steering around, knuckle around um, as I see fit to you know to get the best angle alright so I've, I've loosened up those uh, bolts and 
all three bolts are loose. And then the next step is I'm not going to completely remove them. I'm just going to loosen them up a couple of turns. And then I'm going to take a hammer and I'm going to tap them gently. And hopefully what that will do is that will cause this uh, uh, bearing uh, to, to, ex to, to be pushed out slightly. Um, uh, the, the tough thing to do is to get this hub off and then to extract the axle um, because of this hub bearing, which is usually you know, seized into place. I mean, there's some rust that will hold it into place. This has never been done on this vehicle. It's got 198,000 miles on it. So I imagine that there's a little bit of rust holding this bearing and this front wheel bearing in place. So I'm going to tap these, like I said, tap these bolts back here, right here and right here. And then that'll push the wheel bearing forward and then I can extract the whole mess. All right. So as you can see, this is the steering knuckle. I've removed uh, the wheel bearing. It's sitting right over there. Uh, there's some uh, some brake brake dust flashing that goes around it, and uh, where's that axle at? Oh, there it is on the ground. I removed the axle, uh, the axle shaft. So now what we have is a bare steering knuckle uh, with the upper, the upper, and the lower ball joints right down there. Can I get that in there? Let's see what we got here lower ball joints. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the upper ball joint. It's always easiest to remove the upper ball joint um, and that'll give me some room to drop the lower ball joint. So upper ball joint first. Alright, so I've loosened the nut on the bottom ball joint and I've also removed the castle nut on the top ball joint. And pretty much uh, the only thing holding it in place is the friction of the steering knuckle and the spindles. So what I've got to do is that I've got to take a big old hammer and I'm going to whack the steering knuckle right, right about right here. That's like the beefiest part of it. I don't want to distort it. And the shock of that should cause both of those spindles to let go. But uh, what I also want to do is I also want to keep this nut on so that when it breaks loose it doesn't drop to the ground. So. So um, that's, uh, that's next. All right, so it's loose. It worked. It took um, about three good solid wax. I think this is like a three pound sledge or something. It's a little one. Uh, if you try to use a normal carpenter's hander, uh, hammer, there's just not enough weight in that to move that, spin, uh, to move that steering knuckle, but you gotta use something with force. So just, just as a heads up, but um, because I, I kept that bottom nut on, um, uh, the steering knuckle didn't fall off, so I'm about to remove that steering knuckle now. All right, steering knuckle removed. There it is on the ground. Took a little bit more persuading with that uh, hammer, but only about three or four more strokes. And then that's the upper ball joint, and that's the lower ball joint. And we're going to start by pressing them both. Start with pressing uh, uh, the upper ball joint out. Okay, so this is a ball joint press kit. And I uh, rented it from, uh, where did I go? Oh, AutoZone. I, I rented it from AutoZone. They, they require that you put a $100 deposit on it. And if you don't return it, you basically own it for 100 bucks. But I'm going to return and get my deposit back. But as you can see, there's a series of plates and tubes and then a giant C-clamp. Uh, I'm going to stack these uh, plates and tubes up on, that, on the top of that uh, ball.